Hello everyone, I'm Mac Fraser, one half of the Nintendo Nerds, here with my first pick for You Should Play This, where we talk about games we have loved playing and why we think they'd be right for you. Today I'll be talking about one of my favorite RPGs of all time, Final Fantasy XII, or more specifically, the HD remaster, The Zodiac Age. It's obvious that the Final Fantasy series needs no introduction. The illustrious series began in 1987 in what was intended to be Squaresoft's Final Fantasy. The smash hit series now spans 15 main installments and countless spin-offs. From tactical grid-based battlers and fighting games to chocobo racing games, their series has offered something for everyone. It's obvious that we could talk about 7 or 10 until the end of time. I mean, of course, I love Final Fantasy X. I played Tuzanarkin at my wedding. But Final Fantasy XII just does not get as much love and attention, and here's why I think you should play this. For those of you who have played the Greatest Hits catalog of Final Fantasy and are not familiar with Final Fantasy XII, this story takes a perspective from another viewpoint than what you might usually be used to. Where other Final Fantasy games usually use their protagonists as the main vehicle for the story, Final Fantasy XII's main cast can sometimes feel like they're only along for the ride. Don't get me wrong, there are some shining moments here and we do get some story development that teaches us a little bit about each of the characters. But in the grand scheme of things, Final Fantasy XII's characters are not given as much emotional time and investment when compared to the likes of Cloud, Aerith, Yuffie, or Yuna. Rather than quiet scenes of internal struggle, this is a tale of vast political intrigue, and there is a lot here to enjoy. With the murder of a king, a princess who has taken her own life, and three kingdoms on the brink of war, you're thrown directly into a story full of twists and turns. The first time I played Final Fantasy XII on the PlayStation 2, I was coming hot off the heels of the acclaimed Final Fantasy X. As someone who bought their PS2 for X a little later in the console's life cycle, and having not had much exposure to the series prior, I kind of expected the game to be a little bit more of the same. However, examining this separately from my experience with X, this RPG stands alone and is worthy of the series name, full of new design choices and gameplay changes that I can definitely respect as bold and new adventurous directions for the series. Combat in Final Fantasy XII took a step away from the traditional turn-based standard of the series. Many of the games before it, except for maybe Final Fantasy XI, had varying versions of a standard turn-based JRPG battle system. Final Fantasy XII revamped this battle system and brought us something completely different for the series in the way of active dimension battles. Gone are the random encounters of past titles. Enemies now roam the overworld, waiting to be engaged. The only way that I can think to describe it is kind of like an offline MMO. Your party wanders the land of Ivalice together, taking down enemies in a gameplay style that is seamless, and it doesn't extract you from the world every time a random encounter occurs. Final Fantasy XII also introduced the Gambit system. All of the characters in your party will over time acquire more Gambit slots, which allow you to create rules that are autonomously followed during battle. It's a series of if-then commands that your party members will follow without being explicitly instructed to do so. If an ally falls in battle, use a phoenix down. If the enemy is weak to fire magic, cast Fira. If an enemy casts haste on itself to be able to attack more quickly, cast slow. You get the idea. Some of the battles in the game can be absolutely ridiculous, and without party members being able to take on some of these tasks on their own, there are bosses and optional enemies that would be nearly impossible to beat. This gambit system really is fun to play with. It gives you all sorts of different ways to set up your team to see how you can take down enemies. Our heroes gain experience and level up similarly to many other JRPGs. When they level up, stats increase and they become stronger, etc. So there really isn't too much to go into there. Where the game offers complexity and variety is in the Zodiac job system. Final Fantasy XII has 6 main characters and 12 job classes to choose from. Each job class allows for specific magic to be used, weapons and armor to be equipped, along with other things like extra stat boosts based on the job classes chosen. One of the things I like about the HD remaster on Switch is that you now have the option to swap job classes at any time you would like, giving you endless opportunities to rework and modify your team as you see fit. The original release of the HD remaster on PS4 did not offer this option. Once your characters were linked to a job class, you were kind of stuck.
Beyond the battle system, the game offers copious amounts of other things to do over the course of your journey. As someone who enjoys grinding their way through RPGs, leveling up as much as humanly possible, I absolutely welcome this. Places like Taverns and the Clan Hall offer extra monster hunts that open up as you progress through the story. These monster hunts often involve extremely powerful enemies that love status effects and changes of the like. Besting these enemies is extremely satisfying in itself, not to mention they almost always reward you with some great loot, weapons, or armor. As I mentioned, Final Fantasy XII originally released on the PlayStation 2 near the end of its life cycle, and even looking back on the original, it is definitely a sight to behold. This HD remaster has only helped make the game look even better. Ivalice is a beautiful world with a large array of different environments to explore, from deserts, caves, and grassy plains, to dark and broody woods and bright and sunny beaches. I am always awestruck when I come back to this game. Ivalice really feels alive. The world is filled with all different races and types of characters that really help to make the world feel real. The Dalmaskin capital city of Rabinaster is a bustling metropolis on the surface and a winding labyrinth of tunnels and shops down below. NPCs are plentiful, most having unique things to say about what's going on in the world around them, or perhaps having quests to offer. It's amazing to see the world that Square Enix originally built back in 2006 with Final Fantasy XII, because there are RPGs today that fail to make a world nearly as compelling and alive as Ivalice. You should play this if you like complicated, convoluted narratives that keep you on the edge of your seat. If you like a large world to explore with a ton of optional content to keep you busy. Or if you liked the original back on the PlayStation 2, but haven't yet bothered to pick up the HD remaster. On the flip side, if you're looking for a game with a character-driven narrative, or don't like endlessly grinding and leveling up to be able to beat the next optional boss, then maybe check out one of our other reviews to find something you might like. In case you couldn't already tell, I love this game. It doesn't follow all the traditions that you might expect from the Final Fantasy series, but there is still so much of that history on display here, and playing the international version for the first time has only given me more to discover. As I previously mentioned, this game isn't for everyone, and even some longtime Final Fantasy fans may view this game as too much of a departure from the other games in the series. But Final Fantasy XII stands tall as one of the great games in Final Fantasy history. Have you played Final Fantasy XII The Zodiac Age, and or the original? How do you feel about this entry in the series? Has your opinion of the game changed since it was released almost 14 years ago? We definitely want to know, so leave a comment below or message us on Twitter or Instagram. Thank you so much for watching. For more nerdy content, make sure to click that subscribe button. As always, we hope you leave this video ready to pick up a pro controller, a paintbrush, or a pen. For the Nintendo nerds, I'm Mac Fraser. Until next time.